It's October 12, 2025, and the Atlantic seaboard is reeling from a perfect storm of meteorological mayhem. In Edgewater, Florida, what began as a routine king tide has morphed into a watery apocalypse, with neighborhoods transformed into impromptu lagoons right overnight. Relentless rains, supermoon amplified surges, and a stalled low pressure system have flooded homes, stranded vehicles, and sparked daring rescues. Our thoughts are with the families knee deep in salt water and memories. Before we dive deeper, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell. Stay ahead of the swells. Tonight, we unpack the Edgewater Deluge. The science behind the surge, human stories of survival, infrastructure breakdowns, and the ripple effects hitting South Carolina and beyond. This isn't just weather, it's a harbinger of our coastal future. Nestled along Florida's space coast in Volusia County, Edgewater, a quaint town of 23,000 known for its serene canals and retiree havens, woke up on October 10th to a nightmare straight out of a disaster flick. Over 48 hours, the community endured a brutal trifecta, 7 to 12 inches of rain in targeted spots, per National Weather Service Damn, gauges, colliding with seasonal king tides, yeah. peaking at 8 feet above mean sea level. These king tides, the highest of the year occur when the moon's perigee aligns with a full moon, pulling oceans higher by up to two feet. At a stalled low-pressure system offshore dubbed a compound flood event by experts, and you've got a recipe for chaos. The flooding wasn't a lone wolf, it was a pack attack. Saturated soils from prior rains couldn't absorb more, while high tides backed up storm drains like clogged arteries, forcing fresh water and salt water to mingle in a toxic brew. Meteorologist Robert Haley from the NWS Melbourne office broke it down in a post-event briefing. This was geography's cruel joke, low-lying Florida shores and Cheetah Drive, just inches above sea level, became ground zero. The king tide slashed drainage by 50%, right as the heaviest downpours hit. We've seen 30 homes with water intrusion, and that's concerning. By Friday evening, October 10th, emergency lines lit up with over 200 calls. Edgewater's stormwater system, a patchwork of 1960s-era pipes and pumps, was designed for 4-inch deluges, not this 12-inch monster. City manager John Dunar, bleary-eyed from a 72-hour command post marathon, addressed reporters, Our pumps ran dry before the tide peaked. Barricades washed away like paper. U.S. Route 1 partial closures stranded commuters, and temporary power outages hit 500 homes when floodwaters kissed transformers. Public Works Director Maria Lopez, surveying the wreckage on October 11th, highlighted the human cost. Debris-clogged canals turned yards into swamps, electrical shorts sparked minor fires, and salt corrosion will haunt us for months. Fucking car floating! Oh, shit! The 
The flood fury doesn't stop at the Florida Georgia line. It's barreling north, slamming South Carolina's low country with equal vengeance. On October 9th, 10th, Charleston's storied harbors and Folly Beach dunes became battlegrounds in their own right. A nameless nor'easter, fueled by the same King Tide cocktail, dumped four to six inches of rain, while easterly gales, gusts to 40 miles per hour, shoved seas inland. High tides crested at 8.0 feet in Charleston Harbor, the highest since 2023's Hurricane Idalia remnants, triggering major coastal flood warnings through October 12th. Thank you for watching. We deliver in-depth analysis of nature's fiercest phenomena. If you found this helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell for future updates. Note, some footage is illustrated. See you next time. Stay safe and informed.